Hey everyone, welcome back to Garden State Growing. My name is Eric and today I have a very exciting video for you. I actually wasn't going to shoot a video for at least a little bit. I'm on vacation next week so I have like seven full days of no work and just playing in the dirt which I think is just going to be great. I've got a drip irrigation system I need to hook up. Uh, I'll get into more of that in a different episode. Um, but today I want to talk about bugs. I want to talk about combating bugs with bugs. Okay. And what I have here, if you can see that, if I can focus in on it, is an entire jug of praying mantises. Now, I just did my beans video, and a lot of you guys commented on it, saying, yeah, but the rabbits got it, the squirrels got it, the rodents got them, uh, and I was basically like, plant them and forget them. I'm sorry if I did not um, emphasize the fact that, yes, if you have uh, pest problems, they still need to be taken care of. That's why I always cover my seedlings now with that uh, clear solo cup with holes punched in the top. And that allows the plants to grow up to about three or four inches, usually at the point where uh, pests stop bothering them so much. I do have my giant dog, Chance. This seems to scare most of the stuff in this yard out. But the other thing that we want to talk about today is aphids um, aphids and other predatory insects now there are a lot of different ways that you can take care of them uh, a lot of them holistically or naturally or organically i usually use uh, neem oil mixed with a little detergent and water i just follow the directions and spray on you know, I, I don't know, as a maintenance, maybe once every two weeks, if I see an infestation, uh, I can hit it a lot more aggressively. Uh, but I, I, I normally don't uh, take an approach to, if I see a couple holes in my leaves, that I need to come out and take care of it right away. That I need to spray something on there, as something as terrible as pesticides that I don't want in my food, on my food, or feeding to my family. So, like I said, there are predatory insects that you can put out into the garden. Uh, ladybugs is a great one. They love to eat aphids and everything else. And another one, like I said, is the praying mantises. Now, I can't remember exactly where I bought these from, but you can easily get them online. And it did come with two big egg sacs, just in case one did not germinate. And I had plans on taking this out and making a video and putting it... Um, these little egg sacs out of my garden and letting them naturally hatch but i never really got around to it so today i'm going to take my praying mantises and i'm going to just broadcast them out there's got to be at least a couple hundred in here now they do give me a fruit fly culture or like some type of little fly culture that i could have grown flies and fed to these because these are actually made to be pets you can keep a couple of them and let them grow big and strong but i have a couple hundred in here so i'm going to take these and i'm going to broadcast them out to my vegetables hope that the birds don't get too many of them there are a couple hundred and i'm pretty sure that they're still hatching out of these egg sacs. Uh, I got this tip from James Prigioni, who has his own gardening channel, and he goes out and he collects things these wild. Now, I've tried to contact him and find out his spot, but I guess it's like a fisherman with their fishing spot. They don't necessarily like to tell you where it is. So I just went ahead and I bought them. They were cheap. I think it was like 20 or $25 for this. So I'm going to take these out to my garden now. And I'm just going to start to broadcast them. I'm going to bring you along and I'm going to show you what they look like coming out and how many they are. Now the praying mantis is a wonderful insect. They will hang around the tomatoes and the brassicas and the peppers and, and in the garden. And then they'll branch out and, and move away. But these can eat tremendous amounts especially when they're this small of the little aphids and then when they get bigger when they get bigger and uh, and, and adult size and they start to molt 
they will start taking care of caterpillars, slugs, beetles. This right here is the best pesticide that you could put in your garden besides probably um, some ladybugs. So let's go down to the garden and start to put these out. Okay guys, so uh, right now here I am buying my rose bushes um, that I really don't care about. My wife loves them, so but they're not really being attacked. But as you can see, my hardest hit plant that I can see right now is my sunflowers that are popping up. I'm right next to my corn patch here, which is looking very good, especially over just, I think the last couple days this corn has really started to pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this up. Now this is a lot of <laughs> praying mantises. Oh my goodness, Woo -hoo. and I think, oh, they're already starting to come out. Look, look at all of them. Now, if you're scared of these insects, please don't be. Yes, they do have pinchers on them, but no, they do not necessarily like to bite um, people. I, matter of fact, I've never heard uh, of anybody been pinched or bitten by a praying mantis and when I did get these I did do research into people that kept these as pets um, and they said that they're, they're never a problem so it still is just a little bit creepy to see um, these amazing insects and just chilling so I'm just gonna go right ahead Oh, they look, I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm like filming over here and doing this, and they're like, huh, huh. so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave that there, and I'm going to let them chill. Now, you can see in here the egg sacs, they are, it looks like both of them um, started to hatch. I was spraying these and misting these down once every two days. Oh, they are just so cute. Look at that little guy. All right, enough. I'm going to start. Oh, oh, that's not kind of what I wanted to do. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. All right, I don't want to kill any of them. I'm going to take this little egg sac here, and I'm just going to plant that right there. In the... Oh, it's not going to go in. It's climbing up my arm. Uh-oh. Bye-bye. <sighs> and I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to take this little batch. I'm sorry if my filming is, is not as fantastic as I would like it to be. As you can see, here's an example of, you know, the cup method that I use. My cucumbers are doing really well. Oh, look at They are all over me they are loving me and i think i'm gonna come over oh they're biting me no i'm just kidding and i'm gonna try to yep i'm just gonna let some of them crawl out onto these plants look at they're eager they're eager to get out onto these plants find some oh they're hanging on they're eager to get onto these plants and I'm sure find some safety. Now they're gonna go through all of these plants that may have a little bit of damage. You don't need much. Only one or two of these will go around and eat a ton of aphids. There he is on my arm again. Can you see that? Can you focus? Oh, he can hang on tight. I'm sorry if this is out of focus. It's very difficult to do this. <clears throat> okay, good. Oh, and there's more on my hands. I can feel them. Here, get on the plant. Go on the plant. Go on the plant. Not on me. Okay, so some there. I guess my artichoke's looking... Oh, beautiful. Oh, I don't want to lose that egg sac. I'm going to put that on the other side of my yard. D 
you got that suspicious feeling like something's crawling on you, it may be true. All right, one or two. There you go. I'm going to throw some in my carrots here. They are looking good. There's a nice weed. Well, at least this stripe of carrots is looking good. That stripe, not so much. That was, I don't know. Uh, I don't care. Um, my onions, I'm not even going to bother throwing them in there because why? I mean, nothing really bothers my onions that I know of. All right, so here we go in my tomatoes. A couple here. A couple there. Let them go. Now, I had... Uh, uh, I had a person in my life tell me that... Uh, basically have no idea what I'm doing that they could plant their tomatoes in a couple weeks and uh, oh I definitely have one on my shoulder I don't know how I'll get all the way up there and they are going to fruit just as well I am going to deny that because that right there is at least a 36 inch tomato plant with flowers on it already single stemmed looking good ready to produce tomatoes Matter of fact, some of these need to be trellised up a little bit. I'm going to throw a couple more down here. Now, uh, you know what? I'll get into a little fact FAQ about praying mantises in a little bit. All right. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to spread these for the rest of my garden. There's no reason for you to see the rest of this. I am going to take this one egg sac I have and put it all the way on the other side. So as they do hatch, it is an overcast day. It was drizzling out a little bit. That'll be good for these egg sacs. Why not put somebody some on my beautiful blueberries that are planted right now i'm gonna throw some on these we're back um i have to hold my camera now because my tripod has seen its last day i really do need to order a new one but i did get a lapel mic i did have <laughs> matter of fact i did have a couple other lapel mics that were just garbage didn't work at all or the sound quality was so bad that um it didn't make it worth using so now i did go out and i purchased the smart mic it came with tremendous amount of reviews so we'll see how well it's doing especially considering i'm actually talking very calmly and slow right now so let's talk about praying mantises and the beneficial properties of having praying mantises in your garden i have always thought that the praying mantis was a very majestic looking um insect it is one of the only insects that has the ability to actually rotate its head 180 degrees to the point where it can actually see behind itself. Now, there are experts out there that say that praying mantises can see up to 60 feet away, which helps for them hunting and also attracting them into your garden. If you would like to try to naturally attract mantises into your garden, they do like plants like rose or rose bushes or anything that's in that family, uh, along with blackberries as well. Uh, they like to hide in them uh, and tall grass uh, as well. Um, and they are great and beneficial to eating aphids, beetles, slugs, praying mantids, uh, <laughs> they can grow anywhere depending on the species that you get from two and a half inches to up to 12 inches. Um, I believe the Chinese uh, mantis is one of the most popular or common especially in the eastern united states they do grow to about six inches um and they do eat like i said all the nasty insects but you do need to be careful because you have to recognize that they will also eat beneficial insects in your garden as well so if you're going to choose to put an insect in your garden like ladybugs 
uh, or lady beetles, like some people call them, I think, in England. Um, I wouldn't necessarily plant, put them both in your garden at the same time. Um, but then again, this is not from experience. This is my first year using an insect to combat insects, even though I really don't have that big of a problem right now in my garden. Most praying mantises, they are within the green or brown or dark brownish color, which makes them very easy to camouflage. Praying mantises aren't the type of go out and catch hunters. They more like to sit still, blend in, camouflage themselves, and wait for their prey to come to them. And then with their cute little praying claws that they have with the jagged little spikes on them, they reach out and snatch it. And then they just chew the insects apart and pull them down. But they do help with tomato hornworms, moths. Uh, like I said, they can grow big enough to even eat mice and hummingbirds. Hummingbirds. I don't want that mantis in my garden, but I do want the mantises that I did put out. Now, each egg sac can roughly produce anywhere from 200 to 400 little nymphs, they're called, and they're just baby little versions, and they're so, I find them completely adorable. They will take all season to grow into adulthood, and it's mantises, it's T-I-D-S, it's not mantis, it's mantis, whatever, I don't care. Um, but they will take all summer to um, grow into adulthood, and they are an annual insect. They only do live for, I believe, anywhere from 90 to um, 120 days, pretty much. So they will, you know, become complete adults by the time that they have come into my garden. But that entire growing life cycle, they will progressively start eating bigger and bigger insects. So right now, I would really think that they're going to hit on aphids and the other smaller insects that are very hard for me to control unless I'm continually spraying with uh, a neem oil, and then there's caterpillars that they will start feeding on as they start to get bigger and molt uh, and take care of tomato hornworms, moths, and stuff like that. There are some amazingly gorgeous looking uh, mantis out there like the orchid mantis that I did I found when I was doing some research on pet owners you can keep these uh, as pets my uh, the website and I wish I could post it but I can't remember where I got it from they do also sell like little netted shelters that just didn't seem worth it for me to buy. I, I, I probably could have just made one out of a couple pieces of sticks and some screen cloths. But I have no desire to sit here and produce uh, these little flies that the cultures that they give you. I'd much rather just put them out into my garden and let nature take its course. And if the birds come in and they pick off a couple few, that's fine. Now next year, I may have to go out and buy some more or try to find a spot where I could find these uh, mantis egg sacs. Or if I'm lucky enough, a couple of them might decide to reproduce and have egg sacs in my own garden that I could just leave and let reproduce for next year. Now, there's that whole myth that once a male mates with a female, the female eats the male, uh, like a black widow spider or something like that. Uh, yeah, it is true. A uh, female will do that to a male, but not necessarily all the time. Sometimes the man gets away. It's, it, it, it's okay. So, I hope you enjoyed this video from Garden State Growing. This is an off-the-cuff video. I didn't do a whole much more research into it than I did when I first purchased these um, praying mantises. When I saw this video, you can go check him out, James Prigioni. Um, I love him. He's from New Jersey. He's hardcore like me. He's got a nice Italian, you know, Jersey accent, and he does a uh, he does the back to eating garden style because he, he 
obviously has the property to do it. Um, but where he grows fruit trees and everything's very natural. Uh, it's, it's it's very much like a forest, a fruit forest and vegetable forest in his backyard. I highly recommend. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below so you can go check that out. Uh, Thank you for joining me here today. We're going to see how these praying mantises work out, if they work out at all. I, I have had so many recommendations from other gardeners that they do work out that I see no reason why they wouldn't. I hope to see some nice big mantises out there protecting my gardens all day and all night when I don't have the opportunity to do it. So this week I'm on vacation and I plan on doing a tremendous amount of to, to do in my garden. There's so many things that I have not planted. My herbs yet I haven't planted. Uh, my cucumelons did not transplant well at all, so I want to give them another shot. I've got to get that greenhouse emptied out, so whatever I don't get planted from inside there is going to get composted unless you want them. If you want them, go to GardenStateGrowing at gmail.com and just let me know, and you can have them. I have an entire tray of seedlings about this tall. Okay, and they're ready to go into the ground. They're already hardened off. They're already beautiful looking. They're already growing great. But if I can't get them into the ground, they, unfortunately, they're going to go into the compost pile. So please give me an email. We'll work something out. Like I said, I'm off on vacation all week. I will, I will accommodate you to come down and pick up these plants if you want them. I love you. Thank you. Please leave a positive comment in the comment section below. Really, lately, it's been nothing but negative and poo-pooing and you don't know what you're doing or you don't know what you're talking about. All right, okay, I'm not going to argue with you. We can find out at the end of the season, I guess, you know. I know what I can do. You guys don't, but that's why I'm bringing you along hit that like button hit that share button and and so, you know hit that notification bell so every time i do put out a video you do get to see it i love you have a great evening for this impromptu little video that i've done and uh we'll see how everything works out peace out